Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 18, aka the third to last episode of Supergirl as a whole, as an entire series. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so as you know, Supergirl is coming to an end, and it's very sad this was the last single episode we have. Next week's episode is going to be a double two-hour series finale for Supergirl, and that's going to be it. Obviously, next week is very anticipated because it is going to be seeing the return of many major returning characters like mon -El, Wynn, and also James, and it's also going to be concluding the season story, but the series as a whole. So lots to look forward to and lots of shocking stuff goes down in this episode, especially the ending, which I'm sure you guys are going to be freaking out about and wanting to talk about. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but for now, let's go ahead and begin at the beginning. So it begins pretty fast and William reveals the information that Otis was able to give him. However, it's later revealed in the episode that Lex actually set that up and made sure Otis looked like he wasn't sort of in the same kind of pathway as Lex anymore, and he would sort of sway Team Supergirl away from basically finding out what he wanted them to not find out, and that was to do with Esme, of course, because he had been like one step ahead, again, he's from the future, he knows lots of stuff about what's going to happen, and he's basically been orchestrating everything that's going on. Okay, so also at the start of the episode, Alex is preparing for her bachelorette party that goes down later in the episode, and also it's revealed Team Supergirl no Lex is head over heels for Nixley, and that is revealed via that meeting with Otis and William. So William roasts Andrea at Catco once he goes back there for being pathological and releasing Lex's journal. Obviously this is a big thing and comes with big repercussions later in the episode and this is obviously a big wake up call for Andrea because it's basically her brashness and her want to get clicks that causes the death of an actual person. Andrea even calls Lena in this episode because they used to be friends and Lena gives her what pretty much is just her mind and says like, yes, your report with Lex's journal was completely brash and, and it was a bad idea, but also there is some good side to her. So obviously there is kind of hope for Andrea, although pretty much we can say she's a bad person and she really is very selfish and self-centered and is not thinking about the safety of her colleagues as they are in a risky line of business and if something or someone disagrees with them, her colleagues could be in complete danger. Meanwhile, Brainy calls the Legion of Superheroes in the 31st century to confirm everything that they'd heard from Otis, and they pretty much confirm everything that Lex and Nixley are a thing in the future, and that they gather all the totems and create the Allstone, and it's also revealed that Nixley dies in the future, so obviously getting information from the future is very risky, However, I think in the case of this, they are able to get away with it somehow because it seems like with Lex's interference, Team Supergirl can interfere and change things as well because he's already changing everything by being there in the first place. Okay, so Team Supergirl face off against Lex and Nixley for one of the couple of times throughout this episode. So Supergirl is shocked to see that the Hope Totem is not destroyed because she thought she destroyed it by throwing it into the sun. But it turns out, and this comes to Brainy pretty quickly, that he instantly figures out how they were able to basically reform the totems because they exist no matter if they are destroyed in some form and they just go into another kind of totem, I guess. And at that point, Brainy was able to take the Dream Totem as well, so that Team Supergirl have quite a lot of the totems by the end of this episode. Shortly after this, Nixley finds the truth totem. It's in an old camera, which kind of makes sense. She references the idea that like cameras see everything. And so basically the truth and the way that she is able to tap into the totem is by revealing that she wants to have someone like Lex by her side and close. And obviously this is a big thing about their relationship this episode, which is evolving because she is starting to trust Lex more 
and Lex is doing more and more selfless things. Although, as it's revealed later in the episode, it's clear that Lex still has his schemes on the side. Okay, so Alex versus Supergirl. Now, there is a little bit of confrontation that goes on between the two of them this episode. It's a lot about parental advice, and basically Kara tries to say that maybe it would be a good idea to give Esme some sort of alien power dampener, just like she did as a kid because it gave her some kind of comfort knowing that she's not going to be a danger to anyone. And obviously Alex doesn't take this in the right way, although Kara definitely meant it in a good way because it helped her when she was young, but with obviously Alex being the mum, she is very much so against this because it's a different time and she wants Esme to be able to live with her powers rather than to suppress them like Kara did or like any other alien did in the past. And so yeah, that's a pretty crazy scene and this kind of continues but it does go away later in the episode. Okay, so the truth totem is kind of like Wonder Woman's lasso, which is shown as Nixley uses it on Lex to tell the truth about what he's actually thinking and what he truly desires. And he pretty much says exactly what he's been saying over the last couple of episodes, revealing that, you know, the only reason he is here is to do all of this for Nixley and he's pretty much not thinking about himself. And so, you know, they're going to be a proper team together, as now they trust each other's every move. Okay, so Kara reveals to Sean that she's been avoiding the tower because Alex is mad at her, and she thought that, you know, it was a good idea, and obviously Sean is able to comfort Kara, but also reveal the other side of the coin that Alex is kind of right, because she is the mum, and after all, it is her decision about how to raise her kid, and you know, maybe necessarily is not very good for Esme to dampen her powers, but it was good in the case of Kara, and that was, you know, Eliza's choice to dampen the powers, because that's what she thought was right as her parents. So, yeah, you get the two sides of the coin, and although it's not great to see the two sisters kind of fighting or being at odds, it's still good to get that kind of middle person like Jean, who's able to say, look, both sides are valid, and you have your reasons, but no one is completely wrong, but maybe we should listen to Alex because she is the mum after all. But Kelly believes that Esme's tattoo on the back of their neck, which they found out about after last episode, obviously that was the cliffhanger, that she's been turned into the love totem, and we know she's going to be a target, that means that Lex and Nixie are going to be after her. And it's later revealed at the end of the episode that Esme is in fact the love totem and so that's at the point in the bachelorette party where everyone freaks out and they go back to the tower and that's when shocking things ensue. And we'll get to that in just a moment, I'm just teasing it right now, but we will finally get to that. We just have like a couple of other points to hear. Okay, so Supergirl finds out where Naxim's ship has been all this time, it's in space, they have a battle in the ship, and there's three Lexo suits. By the end, there is only one Lexo suit that survives with Nixley, and the two others are destroyed. I don't know what happened to Mitch at that point, but Supergirl and Martian Manhunter are able to take them down, and the ship ends up blowing up. And so Team Supergirl have five of the totems is revealed just after this and that Lex has no ship and, and only one Lexo suit. And so Team Supergirl think they have the upper hand. But little do they know that Lex and Nixley are tracking Esme and they're going to be coming to their base and they're going to be taking what's theirs. Now, time for the bachelorette party. It is great. Everyone is looking super chic, super cool and super fancy in this bar and they're just having a great time, and then everyone gets up, Alex and Kelly start dancing, then Lena gets up, starts dancing, Brainy and Nia have a heart to heart, Brainy starts worrying about having to potentially leave everyone, and then at the point where Kara gets up and starts dancing in her goofy way, I just absolutely burst out laughing, it was fantastic, I love it, the dancing was just so cool, and I thought the lighting was really nice in the scene, and just seeing them all have a good time and interact together like this, it was great. And so it's at this point where we see 
William and Esme. And so William's obviously looking after Esme and they're baking. Obviously, William's very good at baking, so he's trying to teach her a few tricks that he has been taught before by his parents and people that taught him. And so it's at this point where they are attacked. And so William realizes and he tells Esme to hide. And then Lex and Nixley proceed to walk into the tower and Lex says, William Day, it sounds like your time is up. And so it cuts to William being held hostage and Lex has a gun to his head. And it turns out after like a bunch of chatting and basically William telling Lex what's what, and obviously he wasn't the one to reveal the journal that was obviously Andrea so by proxy Andrea like I said earlier is all to blame in this instance and so out of nowhere as Lex prepares to leave after he's got everything and they have Esme he steps back into the tower and shoots William oh my god I freaked out here William is in fact dead He's able to scramble and record his death. Obviously, this is sent to Andrea, which is very shocking. And she gets that message. And obviously, we're going to see the repercussions of that later in the next episode. But I feel so bad for William because he's become a really good character by the end and a real hero. And it was great to see them actually focusing some time on him. And especially this episode, I feel like, you know, he's been such a great journalist. And he's really been living up to that kind of catco side of Supergirl. And now he's shot by Lex and he's actually killed. It's so bad that no one was there to help him. And the fact that Kara wasn't using her superheroing or anything. I mean that's terrible and obviously she was out at the bachelorette party. But nevertheless I feel like she should have been listening in and honing in on like Lex's voice and Nixley's voice. If she was able to which she definitely could have. But... Yeah, William bites the dust and he's shot by Lex and it was actually very sad and at least he was able to record himself to actually expose that Lex killed him because he reveals that it's all because of the journal and this obviously is going to be very impactful for Andrea next episode because she's the one that leaked that journal and basically tagged William's name to it even though it's something that he wouldn't do because he knows it's completely brash and Dealing with someone like Lex is no easy thing to do because he's going to come after you no matter what. And William knew that and yeah, Andrea screwed him basically. So Kara finds William dead and Esme is kidnapped and what an end to an episode. I can't wait for next episode. It's going to be crazy. Obviously, you're going to have the funeral, which will feature a lot of returning faces from the Legion of Superheroes. That'd be mon and Wynn. Also, James is going to come back, and maybe there's going to be a couple more cameos. We'll have to wait and see. But for now, next week's going to be crazy. This episode ended with an absolute banger, like literal a bang. So for now, if you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. And subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos. And you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Remember, I'm going to be posting my Supergirl trailer breakdown video out later today or tomorrow. So please be on the lookout for that. And don't miss my coverage of Supergirl series finale next week. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.